Today's video is brought to you by one of my favorite services in existence, Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment all in one place. You can find a huge selection of audiobooks, podcasts, and more. With an Audible membership, you'll get not only one Audible credit every month, good for any title in the entire premium library, but also unlimited access to the Plus catalog, which has thousands of audiobooks, original entertainment, fitness classes, meditation exercises, and more. I can easily recommend Audible because I use it literally every day. I walk about 60 kilometers a week and I spend most of that time listening to audiobooks on Audible. Right now I'm going to enthusiastically recommend the new unabridged release of Rogue Squadron, which is book one in the X-Wing series. It was put out as part of the Essential Legends collection and it's just really, really well done. Right now you can get a free Audible trial by going to audible.com slash Eckhart Slatter or by texting Eckhart Slatter to 500-500. That includes 30 free days of Audible and one title that you get to keep no matter what. Link, of course, down in the description. Thanks to Audible for sponsoring today's video. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to what I think will be a very interesting Star Wars versus video because today we are not only crossing the threshold between Star Wars Legends and Canon, but also considering two of the largest ships in the Star Wars universe that also have some surprising similarities. Specifically, we will be taking the Yuzhan Vong world ship from Star Wars Legends and putting it against the Mega Star Destroyer, the supremacy from Star Wars The Last Jedi. I'll talk about each ship, and then at the end I'll put them in a head-to-head -head matchup and give my opinion on which ship I think would come out on top. Now, as always, if you want to skip around this video, you can feel free to do so using the timeline down below. So I mentioned that the Yuzhan Vong world ship, and by the way, I'll specifically be going with the Domain Hull world ship, was similar to the Supremacy, and that's because they're far more than just giant warships for their faction. They are essentially symbols of the faction and moving capitals. The Yuzhan Vong world ships were used to transport the Yuzhan Vong, their warriors, and their supplies between galaxies. And when the invasion began, they largely served as factories where they helped create new starships, ground units, and more. The Supremacy, of course, was also a mobile capital for the First Order. It not only served as the flagship of Snoke and was capable of carrying everything from mass of resurgence class battle cruisers to walkers and stormtroopers, but was also capable of building and repairing ships and pretty much anything else the First Order would need for a successful war. So you could put the supremacy in the middle of your fleet to win a space battle and then use it to facilitate a ground invasion, and that's sort of the beauty of the ship, and something you kind of need when you're talking about something that's 60 kilometers wide. With that being said, let's start the formal discussion, and we'll start with the Yuzhan Vong world ship. So, most world ships would not really be appropriate for this fight because of the long time spent between galaxies, the majority of Yuzhan Vong world ships were dying by the time they entered combat with the New Republic and the other factions of the galaxy. And I say dying, not deteriorating, because Yuzhan Vong world ships were living beings, they were grown, they aged, they got larger, and yes, they eventually died. But it wasn't really just one organism, a Yuzhan Vong world ship, like all Yuzhan Vong craft, was a conglomeration of different creatures, each responsible for different functions. For example, the exterior of the world ship was made out of very hard coral, while other membranes on the outside spirals of the world ships were used for travel in the intergalactic void. That also means that each ship was unique. Now, when it comes to the Domain Hull world ship, we don't know how large it was. The largest was the size of the Death Star, that was the Banu Ross, that ship was old and dying. The Domain Hull world ship, on the other hand, is describing as being a big one even by Vong standards. That's an Enemy Lines 1 Rebel Dream, and I think that, as far as I know, is the best description we get of size. If we look at this picture also, which has a Super Star Destroyer in comparison, I'm actually going to guess that it's probably pretty similar in length to the Supremacy, 60 kilometers wide. Longer, however, because it is circular, but it also has 
the ganglia on the outside of the vessel which don't provide the same amount of mass. So what would the ship have been armed with and what were its defenses? Well, I'll spend a bit more time on the world ship because the Yuzhan Vong technology is different. But the new essential guide to vessels does give us a general breakdown of the offensive and defensive potential of a world ship. It says, and I quote, in reference to a smaller world ship, that each vessel is equipped with hundreds of magma weapons that expel molten slag at enemy vessels. These weapons range from small openings with the destructive capability of conventional blaster cannons to larger emitters, which can shoot burning rocks the size of freighters over great distances. And you might think that hurling basically rocks on fire isn't very accurate, but especially early on in the war, these weapons are incredibly dangerous. Given that this was not only a world ship, but a very large and healthy world ship belonging to the strongest clan within the Yuzhan Vong, this thing would have had thousands, if not tens of thousands of weapons. The world ship's other great weapon, however, was its Dovin Basil. Yuzhan Vong vehicles, because they were organic, did not make use of traditional shields. Instead, for propulsion, defense, and sometimes even offense, they used what was known as Dovin Basils. These were a form of Yuzhan Vong biotic, which could actually generate gravitational fields and even black holes. In combat, Dovin Basils could be used to propel a ship, they could suck up lasers and munitions, and the gravity could even be used against enemy vessels. Usually this meant pulling the shield off the ship, but when we're talking about something as large as a Mega Star Destroyer, I think things could get very, very weird. The other asset we need to discuss is a Yamosk, also known as a War Coordinator. Yamosks were essentially the Yuzhan Vong's version of artificial intelligence. Through what was essentially psychic powers, the Yamosk coordinated forces during battle, almost like a Jedi using battle meditation. During the early stages of the Yuzhan Vong War, the galaxy found this very difficult to counter because the Yuzhan Vong pilots in their starfighters, which the Domain Hall vessel will have tens of thousands of, were operating at incredible levels of coordination. That pilots just couldn't meet. But we'll come back to that. I think we should also briefly touch on the specifications of the Mega Star Destroyer. The Mega Star Destroyer, of which the Supremacy was the only known ship, was, as I mentioned, essentially the mobile capital of the First Order and was the largest vessel in Star Wars canon. Like the Yishan Vong world ship, it had a variety of exotic technology from massive heavy turbo lasers to even hyperspace tracking tech. You don't need to look at the diagram of the Supremacy to tell that this ship is very different than most other Star Destroyers in the Star Wars universe, although it does help. The flying wing shape of the ship means that weapons are basically spread out in towers across the ship's front, which probably means that it can put a lot of firepower at anything directly in front of it. Also at the front of the ship are numerous deflector shield projector plates, meaning that this thing is most likely very, very resilient. I mean, we do see it get blown up, but in conventional battle, I don't think you'll be able to break through the shielding on the Mega Star Destroyer very easily, and because of the way it's laid out, it probably has lots of shield projectors so that energy can be moved across the vessel, shields will overlap to provide extra coverage, I think you get the idea. Still, a lot of the ship, perhaps even more so than the Yuzhan Vong world ship when you look at this diagram, is set up for spaceship construction, mining, war coordination, and more. Maybe less proportionally than the Yuzhan Vong world ship, but I do think that vessel has more mass overall, so... But we're speculating pretty heavily at this point. Unfortunately, we don't get very much of the supremacy even in the cross section. We do know, however, that this thing is loaded with weapons of various sizes, including turbo lasers and ion cannons, what the cross section describes as thousands of all of these weapon types, that it had completely state-of-the-art technology, including its armor, probably thousands of starfighters, and of course, as I mentioned, that it was completely self-sufficient. So, who wins? Well, I gotta say, this is, I think, the only Yuzhan Vong world ship that would even have a chance, because it is more than any other primed for battle, and that's probably why it was chosen by Domain Law. And I won't lie, going into this battle, I actually thought the Yuzhan Vong would take it pretty easily, and the reason for that was because the Yuzhan Vong, in early engagements with the New Republic and the Empire,
player usually won because their technology works pretty well against factions that haven't prepared for it. Their war coordinator and their miniature black holes especially were pretty much hard counters to the basics of the usual space combat doctrine. That being said, I think maybe the supremacy can do it. One way that you can defeat a Yuzhan Vong black hole is by overwhelming it with firepower and I think the Supremacy is perhaps uniquely designed to do this. Unlike many ships in Star Wars which have weapons pointing to the side or even to the rear, the Supremacy is almost singularly focused. All of its weapons point forward and I think that will help it overwhelm the Yuzhan Vong Dovin Basils. And I also do think that it is more of a pure warship than the Yuzhan Vong world ship, which had the secondary role of not only transporting militaries and warriors, but also civilians, in poor conditions by the way, across the galaxy. During the Yuzhan Vong War, world ships were usually targeted not because of their direct power in battle, but because of the fact that they essentially represented Yuzhan Vong capitals with factories and cities and new warriors. But yeah, I do think the supremacy is uniquely situated for a frontal assault. I do think because of the range of its weapons, it can probably stay out of the area where it's going to get its shield sucked off. And despite what we see in The Last Jedi, I do also think that it's probably fairly resilient. That being said, I don't think the Yuzhan Vong are without a chance. Again, their technology is so exotic. Their starfighters, I think, will definitely have an advantage in combat with their strange technology and the probable presence of Yamos. But I just don't think overall that's enough to make a difference. And I think the Supremacy is one of the only vessels in Star Wars that could take on a fully powered world ship and maybe win. So I'm going to give this battle to the Supremacy, but it's going to be a close one. I'll give it the win 6.5 times out of 10. That, however, is just my opinion. I look forward to reading yours down below. Is there a match if you'd like to see next? Make sure you like this video and leave your thoughts down below. Thank you again to Audible for sponsoring today's content. I'll see you guys next time.